Hello, CH is true here, and I want to get to what I consider to be the the question of intelligent design. Let me get a swig of water here. You know, water is life, people. If you don't get enough of it, um, you're not going to live fully. Um, in the honest dialogue between science and religion, we have to get to we have to get beyond intelligent design. And I'm speaking now to religious believers. Um, and I'm going to announce from this video that I do believe in the divine. I do believe in the idea of a ground of all being, and I have a, and this is a very problematic term. But I do believe in the idea of a creator. Now the problem is I don't necessarily believe that there's this moment in creation, you know, that well, let's say the idea that God had to have caused the Big Bang and then there's the universe. Well, you know, obviously cosmologists are going to look to what was before the Big Bang. That is the nature of cosmology and what it is, and I think that they should. And if indeed string theory is the correct model, then you have all sorts of dimensions beyond the the ones we ordinarily experience and by goodness if you have that you have a great mystery there and I don't think the metaphysical can really be ruled out but I'm announcing this straight up that I do have an interest in this debate and that is I do believe in an honest debate between science and religion that gets beyond cavemen and dinosaurs living together that gets beyond um, intelligent design as it's been formulated, and by which I do not mean an intelligent designer, but by which I do, what I mean is the Discovery Institute, or the irreducible complexity argument. I believe that religious people and people of faith need to get beyond the irreducible complexity business and the whole um, argument from the Discovery Institute. Uh, if you, as far as creation science is concerned, if you believe in the idea that the universe is only a few thousand years old, you're probably not going to like my videos, simply because uh, I don't, and I make it very clear in my videos that the Big Bang is fact, that evolution is fact, that that's where the fossil evidence points to, that that's where the genetic evidence points to. Um, but there's a subtler argument that people who are people of faith who do accept evolution might fall into. And that is the ID argument, the argument that comes from the Discovery Institute. Now, the Discovery Institute is a hodgepodge. Some people there are creation scientists, but some people there do believe that in the idea of common origins, that, that life does have a common origin. But they will claim that God has to intervene at crucial times to make corrections in the order of nature. Uh, in particular, there's the idea of the bacterial flagellum, that it could not have evolved through natural selection, and that therefore it must be evidence of the perfect creator, the fact that it is irreducibly complex and could not have emerged through natural selection. Now, there are plenty of science videos that will disprove this. I do not have the scientific knowledge that I can disprove it. But the bottom line is all you need to do is come up with the possible way that a bacterial flagellum could have evolved through natural selection, even with no proof, and you have disproven that argument. For instance, if I say there's a boulder up there on the roof and that it had to be a giant that put it up there because it could not have gotten up there by normal mechanisms, all you would have to do is come up with some mechanism that could have put it up there and my claim is disproven. You don't even need to prove that that's how it did get up there. And so it's the same thing with arguments that are arguments from ignorance. All you need to do is come up with a possible model and that argument is disproven. Now, um, Kenneth Miller has indeed come up with um, an ar counter argument to the ID claim. Kenneth Miller, by the way, is a religious believer. He is not an atheist. He is an evolutionary biologist who's also a uh, religious believer, interestingly enough. I do not have the scientific knowledge that I can do that. Both the Darwinians and the those among the ID movement who are scientists have more knowledge of um, molecular biology than I have. I have no way I can compete with either one, and I have no way I can refute the Discovery Institute's argument um, on the basis of science. But I can say that it, it, I believe the Discovery Institute to be theologically aberrant, and, what, and I believe that people who want to get to a dialogue 
between religion and science um, need to get beyond, oh, there's a bacterial flagellum, or oh, this is a perfect intelligent design, therefore there's a designer. And here it is. Um, the entire argument rests on a hierarchical notion of the cosmos, where uh, creation happens from the top to the bottom. Let me explain. In ancient times, God was often viewed as the absolute monarch of the cosmos. And this was as true of polytheistic societies as it was of monotheistic societies, because polytheistic societies did believe in some kind of a supreme God. Um, that may vary from society to society, but generally there was this intuition or this understanding. Read Socrates and you will see that. Um, look at the Native Americans and you will see that they believe in some concept of the Great Spirit. Look at um, Hinduism and there is some concept of mon monism or some concept of maybe you might say pantheism. It is not unique to Jews, Christians, or Muslims, the belief in a supreme creator. However, in the, in the higher evolution of all of these religions that I've just mentioned, the Abrahamic and the others, there is the idea of God as parent, or the idea of God as caring about creation. Uh, but the monarch concept in the more literalistic and fundamentalistic components never went away. Then with the Enlightenment and the Reformation, absolute monarchy, not so popular. So you then had the concept of God as the supreme factory owner, or the designer in a capitalistic sense. Capitalists and government bureaucrats both emerged with the new bourgeois order as the primary um, leaders of society, so God was reimagined in the form that Paley imagined God to be, and that is the supreme watchmaker. But the problem is, all that the Darwinians had to do was take the very same Victorian capitalist assumptions and then turn them on their head. Once they came up with a mechanism, i.e. natural selection, that did explain uh, the evolution of life, the Paleyites had a problem. And indeed, William Paley has never really recovered since. Um, now, there are more sophisticated forms of Paley's argument that I think could survive the onslaught of Darwinianism, but that maybe for another video. The simple form of Paley's argument was uh, disproven. What intelligent design seeks to do is, is resurrect Paley to explain what they consider to be minute but inexplicable miracles of nature, i.e. the bacterial flagella, i.e. Um, aspects of life that they believe that natural selection could not have arisen. And these are then reasons why we should believe. But see, the problem with that is whether you're talking about God as absolute monarch or God as the tinkerer in the industrial capitalist model, these are not reasons that people have believed in history. The reasons that believers have believed in history is a sense of transcendence. It is a sense of the divine. It is not as um, some, I think it was Krauss who said that, well, people go to religion for an explanation of the natural world but then science explains the natural world better, so we should jettison religion. No, it doesn't. The, religion, the intelligent designers will say there are still these mysteries that science cannot explain. The problem is they're accepting the narrative that comes from the mechanistic understanding of nature. What they are saying is that since that mechanistic mechanism is not perfect, there needs to be a mechanizer. But, the, but God, I believe, is too big to be a mechanizer. That's a George Bush term, a desire, a mechanizer, right? All right, so we're ever since George Bush, uh, I guess we have the decider, now we have the mechanizer. But I think that God, in the case of George W. Bush, God was the supreme desire. I mean, he'll claim that God told him to go into Iraq, right? Now, you might be saying that's blasphemy, and I think there's a good argument that it is, but in his mind... I guess it was the right decision, still even today, he thinks so. Well, God as the mechanizer, okay, or the designer, um, in a mechanistic universe is not the God that really most religious people have believed in. I'd say the same problem exists with creation science and, and other forms of attempt to, attempts to fuse science and reductionism. Is there either going to be left, pardon me, religion and fundamentalist religion and reductionism. Is there either, either going to be left with fundamentalism, reductionism, or both, but neither are really desirable? 